when it look, comes to the Roman Catholics, they use several different versions of the Bible. At least they have throughout the past. They have often used the Douay version of the Bible, which I think has, recent, has been replaced since then with a different translation. But it was translated from the Latin Vulgate. Uh, and it includes explan explanatory footnotes by church leaders. Once again, you believe what we tell you to believe, and that's about it. Not that we don't have Bibles with commentators, and I got that, but well, even when we study the Word of God with uh, side margins, we keep in mind that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, not the notes of man. But still, they have footnotes in there by the church leaders. It contains all 66 books of the KJV, King James Version, plus it is interspersed with the apocryphal, apocryphal books, which we do not except as being inspired writings. We'll talk about why later. The language of the Douay version is now somewhat outdated. Some of, I think they, a lot of them hold to or promoted to use the New American Bible, which was, edited, which was edited by Catholics, Protestants, and Jews. They've used the Good News Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, the Kalanic, Chonar Rhymes version of the Latin Vulgate. Now, we have not talked about this when it comes to evangelizing, but if we really wanted to and we knew we were going to a Catholic home, we could actually get the Catholic version of the Bible, get them out, and look at the passages of the Bible and see if they line up to, the, to our Bible, which they will. Last time I checked, they will. So we can show them the salvation message through their Bible, kind of a side note. But it is possible, and it will let them see in their very own Bible, you don't have anything special. We might use the King James, but we can show them from their very own Bible that this is the path to salvation. Okay, we'll talk about the Apocrypha real quick. The Apocrypha, if you've ever had... It does occur in some of the King James versions of the Bible, which ones you get. They do have in several other versions of the Bible. Or you can get the Apocrypha by itself. I know Sister Dietrich said that she's seen in times past where the Apocrypha was in the front of the Bible. And honestly, every time I've seen it, it was either in the back of the Bible or right smack dab between the Gospels. Um, not the Gospels, the Old Testament and the New Testament. But. When we look at the Apocrypha itself, the Catholic Church continues to approve of at least 11 of the 14 Apocryphal books that were rejected by the Jews as inspired. These writings came to be classified as Apocrypha, and it does not mean end time, but it comes from the, Greek, from the word um, pseudiographa, literally meaning false writing. There are 14 books of the Apocrypha. Um, just to mention them real quickly. 1st Ezra, 2 Ezra, Tobit, Judith, Esther, the Wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, the Song of the Three Holy Children, the History of Susanna, Bell and the Dragon, the Prayer of Manasseh, 1st and 2nd Maccabees. When it comes to 1st and 2nd Maccabees, to be honest, we can use those as historical books, but not as the inspired Word of God. These books were written in the intertestamental, intertestamental period. What do we mean by intertestamental? Not that they throw a temper when they have their own way, but rather that they are smack dab in between Malachi and the beginning of the Gospels. They are written within that time frame. I have, just going back to 1st and 2nd Maccabees, that gives us a little bit, as if we use it historically, it will give us a history of the Jews, the uprising, and it will give us, if I remember a little bit, uh, it will mention Antiochus Epiphanes, who was one of the types of the Antichrist when we start studying Jewish history. He sacrificed a pig on the altar there in the temple. When we look at the authors, we don't know who they are. We don't have any names, we just know that they were pious Jews who wrote for various reasons. However, there is no justification for adding these passages to the inspired word of God. And when we look at the Orthodox Jews, that even the Jews in the time that they were written rejected them as true writings. 
They had flaws in them. They had errors in them. They were not the word of God. Once again, reasons why the Apocrypha was rejected by the Jews or why the Apocryphal books were rejected by the Jews, however you want to refer to them. They were never accepted as, by the Jews as part of the inspired scriptures, and the Jews were the ones God entrusted with the oracles of God. Would someone please read Romans chapter 3 and verse 2? Romans 3 and verse 2. So the scriptures were entrusted to the Jews. Another reason, when we are reading the Gospels, when we are reading the New Testament, we'll find Jesus saying, and uh, we'll find passages referring to Elias, which is Elijah. We'll find passages being quoted by Jesus where he'll get up and he read right from the book of Isaiah, which is Isaiah, but nowhere in the Gospels, nowhere in the New Testament do we find any quotations by Jesus Christ or the disciples or apostles from any of these books. Also, when we look at the structure, when we look at the teachings of the apocryphal books themselves, all 14, we find that there is internal evidence that they're not the inspired word of God. How do we know that? There's moral errors. There's theological errors. There are historical inaccuracies. There's fictitious myth, folklore, and legends. And we're going to stop with that one for the day. I mean, we'll go over there a little bit more, but we'll pick up on the apocryphal books and what unscriptural teachings they contain next week. But when we look at the Apocrypha itself, like I said, it was never quoted by Jesus Christ or any of his followers. It never was. We don't find anything of them in the New Testament. We don't find any reference to them. And not only that, but even if we go back to the very origins, the Jews of the time rejected them. I mean, if nothing else, that should be a clear indication that these are not part of the inspired word of God. Someone living during that time frame, not just somebody, but several somebody, said that this isn't right. This is not the word of God. These are false. This isn't it. This is wrong. And they might even say, this is more than wrong. This is wrong. So the Apocrypha is not the inspired word of God and is not to be added choose the Bible itself. And even if you find it in the Bible, even if it's KJV, we just know that that's not part of the Bible. We don't accept that as true. Oh. Any thoughts, any questions, anything to add at this point? If not, let's bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. We give you praise and glory because you alone are holy and you alone are worthy. Even right now, Lord, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property, above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as it so desires, making himself visible if he so chooses. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the pastor as it brings forth your message today, anoint mine as those bring forth the word you have us to hear. Knowing the song leaders as they lead us to the songs you have us to hear, knowing their minds and their lips, Lord, as they bring forth and as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our minds will be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to fall on, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives, be even farther transformed into your very image. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you have a fidget spinner?